if you haven't ran in years, you can go out and for most people, like if you're a, a fairly high level cyclist, you can go out and run a pretty good clip. Yes, I've gone and done that before. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm breathing easy here. I'm rolling yeah. pretty good pace. This is my first run in this three years. This is my first run in three years. And this is a cautionary tale. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another fatigued episode of <laughs> Coaches on Gouges. Being tired slouches. Extra slouchy. A little extra slouchy today. Yeah. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about how cyclists can incorporate running into their program basically without demolishing themselves and losing fitness from getting hurt. Yes, this is one I've been wanting to, to do for a while. Yeah. Perfect time of year for it. The cyclist guide to running. A cyclist guide to, yes, yeah. beginning to run. Not necessarily like how you're going to structure an entire program yeah. based around running, but how to incorporate it without blowing yeah. yourself sky high. Yeah, if, and if we seem tired, there's a reason, mm -hmm. mainly because we got home uh, last night. 1.36 a.m. for me. 1.30, I got in bed at 2 a.m., yeah. After driving home from Kansas City. But we got cool hats. We got uh we got something to show for it. Uh we got a cool new partnership uh -huh. with a company called Van Do It out mm -hmm. of Kansas City. Yep. And uh more on that coming. Mm -hmm. But um if first, you like adventures you and like, adventure vans. Yeah, if you like if you're interested in the van life and mm -hmm. uh adventure vans and traveling in a van, stay tuned. Cool. I'm Coach Dale Sanford. I am Coach Bryant Funston. We are the co-founders of BPC Performance Coaching, where we specialize in helping time-crunched athletes optimize their busy schedules so they can maximize their athletic performance. Every BPC coach is trained in our Five Pillars coaching system that has been developed over the last decade through our work with athletes of all ages and ability levels, from fresh off the couch to world championship competitors. You can find out more about BPC by going to buildpeakcompete.com, checking Facebook and the YouTube at buildpeakcompete, or all up on that Instagram at BPC Performance. There we go. Didn't even need it there, Funson. I, I was feeling pretty good on it today. Despite, maybe I work best with no sleep. <laughs> I doubt it. I doubt it not, too. Not I do case. like my sleep. All right, we'll get to the topic of today, but first, as always, as always, shout out, showing some love to our athletes here. Yeah. So I'll lead it off. Uh, we we got we're two weeks behind, basically. We are. Uh, we you were on ride to Rosemary, so um, shout out to uh, Michael Ort, Whoop. who was also on ride to Rosemary with you. Yeah. Which, for those that don't know, is a five-day, roughly 500-mile... 5 525, yeah, or so. Uh, ...trip from Memphis to Rosemary Beach, Florida, raising uh, money for the, what is it, West Cancer... Yeah, um, the wings portion. So, yeah, they're the ones that help families and individuals yeah. that are actually going patient. through treatment. Yeah. yeah, so it's not on the research side. It's on the actual patient care side. Yeah. So that's awesome. Uh, and then Ort decides to turn around drive home, and then drive to Louisville. Yeah. So this ended on Wednesday. Yeah. And his race was Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. So, uh, or, yeah, Saturday. Yeah. Uh, Ironman Louisville. A swim got canceled. Had some had some algae or something in the water that mm. they canceled it, but he that still brain, knocked out. Brain-eating algae? Yeah, that's the, the bad stuff. <laughs> Probably good to cancel. So he, he knocked out the the bike and run. I actually did pretty well. He was he was saying he was fatigued going in, but yeah. that's to be expected after five days, a hundred mile rides. Oh, for sure. Um, but yeah, that's a I mean pretty good turnaround for a uh, couple of days there. Yeah, I was I was still trying to sleep in and uh, get get rid of the soreness, and yeah. he was off uh, knocking out an Ironman. That's that's huge. Uh, I'm going to continue with the with the ride to Rosemary theme. People that we coached, um, uh, David Collins, Hollywood, as they Hollywood call him. Collins. You've seen him on the couch before. Although we started calling him Dollywood on the trip. I kind of <laughs> like Dollywood better. 
<laughs> weigh in. Which uh, one do you like? Weigh, weigh in. Which do you prefer? Uh, Hart Robinson, uh, Bubba Ezel, Johnny uh, Walker, Patrick Nix, Ben Ladd, Luke Cooper. Um, all those were down on the on the ride. Uh, all of them did great. They they rocked out. A few a uh, few of those. It was their first time ever uh, doing the ride. So uh, great work there. Um, and then Willis Porter went over to uh, Arkansas and did the uh, OZ Trails uh, mountain bike event. Uh. And unfortunately, uh, had a mechanical where uh, it ended up blowing all of his. Uh, uh, what you would call it out of his tube didn't seal, oh, seal it, and yeah. he couldn't get the uh, he what? couldn't get the cat the little screw thing out so he couldn't repair he couldn't replace the tube was it like a sidewall puncture I guess yeah uh-huh. so he like ended up having a he, he vowed not to quit and he finished so that, that yeah. was great didn't have the time he wanted but was feeling great up to that point but I mean kind of a testament to the fact that not everything goes it doesn't always go to plan goes to plan right and uh what i told him i was like man <laughs> he's he's had like a bunch of stuff like that happen this year i was like i think you're just getting them all out in 19 and 20s uh 2020 2020 is your year baby that's right uh i'll go we we have uh we, we do a lot coach chris does a lot of work with our our youth athletes so hudson hall he's been steadily improving all year pretty much so uh qualified for the state cross country meet mm-hmm. with a with a best time on that course uh so that's awesome and then a buddy william hennessy mm-hmm. uh in atl uh did the app trail run 78 miles 78 miles yeah and, the, uh, the georgia yeah all the, the georgia, georgia section of the oh. of the at um ran it and completed it 23 and change yeah, under 24 hours. Hours, yes. Yeah. And that's not a running trail. No, <laughs> no. I mean, very few of like ultra trails are like groomed for running per se, but this one is a very hike, <laughs> like up and down. Yeah, like steep grades. Tricky, like there's very little like straight on running. There's no flow. Not a flow. No, no. not flow. Trail. So cyclists, uh, pretty good segue. <laughs> cyclists, this is not where you want to start off <laughs> with your off-season incorporation. Absolutely. Of some run work. So I, I guess I do. Before we have to, before oh. we move on, I got one, one big good luck. That's right. That's right. And that is to our our boy Tim Lynn. Or Timmy Lenny. And uh, Tim is uh, is doing his first major pro seventy point three this weekend in Shanghai. And so he's already there. It's actually for us, it's tomorrow night. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cause he'll start Saturday morning. Okay. Uh, yeah, and yeah. he's, yeah, it's a pretty, about 12 hours ahead, huh? It's 13. I think 13, and okay. he's got a um, pretty stacked field going against a little guy by the name, not little guy by the name of Tim, the Don. The uh, Don. He's uh he'll be lining up with, with the Don. So uh, grip and be, rip baby. Yeah. Should be a good, a good event for him. Grip he's ready to rock. He's his fitness has been steadily climbing. He's putting a lot of work. So excellent. We're ready hey, for it. Show it off on race day, man. Yeah. Just show it off. All right. So getting into the topic of today, how can a cyclist? Wait a minute. First, why the heck? Why? <laughs> why in the world would a cyclist even want to run? That's right? probably what a lot of uh, cyclists tuning in right now uh, are thinking. Like. You know, why run when why? you have a perfectly good bike? Yeah. So number one could be if you break your bike, then you might need to uh, yeah. to start running. But uh, you know, kind of jokes aside, uh, cyclists get so you know when you think about a cyclist position on a bike, you're kind of locked into this what 12 inch or so circle that you're pedaling. You're hunched over your bike. Um, there's there's really not a lot of extension that's happening through the hips um, and even through the knees. So uh, if all you ever do is cycle, you're going to be developing muscular imbalances. Yeah, it's just not it's not load bearing at and all. Really, like very little. I mean, exactly. Uh, so it's not load bearing, and the range of motion is yeah. not not very large. So yeah. two reasons why you should incorporate some running. Number one, impact from running uh, helps you. Your body sends a stimulus to your bones to say, Hey, uh, these bones actually do need to handle some load. Should we get into a conversation on osteoblast? <laughs> Should we go there? Oh, we could, we could, we'll, uh, we'll save that. One. We'll, we'll save that one. But yeah, so, hel- uh, helping promote bone growth, uh, making you a more durable athlete once the season comes. Whoop, whoop, oh, pain, pain train. train coming early. Stressing muscles differently 
taking them through a different range of motion um, and a different strain load is yeah. going to be good from, from a muscular imbalance standpoint, especially in conjunction with strength training. Yeah. Um, it's mentally good to mix it up, you know, where you're not always doing the same thing year yeah. round. We've talked about it before. You know, baseball players are probably the worst at being so sports specific in a, in a specific movement pattern yeah. year round and injuries can develop because of that. You know, it's an overuse that can, can develop. So, yeah. Uh, but from a mental standpoint, it's good to it's good to mix it up in the off season, especially Absolutely. when you know either super cold days, where running running in the cold is a whole lot better. It is from a temperature standpoint um, than riding and having a you know twenty mile an hour wind chill added to you know <laughs> twenty degree weather. Um, and for those of you that travel, if you can develop uh, and, and let the body adapt and handle running. Yeah. Uh, if you're someone who travels a lot, even during the season, this isn't something that just has to be off season during the season, that's going to allow you no excuses when you travel to get, you know, a workout in that you maybe would not have otherwise. Well, and for some, for some cyclists, it is like, you know, we, we try to get them to do strength training mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, for a lot of them, it's a time thing. It's a time sensitive. So, what we can do a lot of times is that hour that they might be riding normally, we can take that hour and they can do a 30 minute run and a 30 minute strength session yep. in place of that mm -hmm. and get more bang for the buck really mm -hmm. uh, in the long run. And that's, that's a, a lot of reason too why cyclists go to running is just to get a little bit more bang for the time uh, as far as like, you know, weight management and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But well, really? you've always said that when you're running a lot, that's when you lean out the most, right? Yeah, like like cycling doesn't lean me out a lot. Running and swimming. Uh, it's because it's too easy to eat snacks while you ride. Yeah, yeah, I know. You got those pockets I back can, there. I can have a whole buffet. So many snacks, and I do. <laughs> <laughs> Big part of the season, I'm, I mean, uh -huh. snacking the whole time. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it'll it does help. You know, just the the amount of calorie burn that it takes to go a mile on the bike and a mile on the run is massively different, you mm -hmm. know? So something I will suggest if you're someone who like just gets so bored with running, uh, trails yeah, can, run be, trails. can be a great off season. Oh, we forgot a good luck for, for all do. the walking tall people. This oh, weekend. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And also, massive. Uh, yeah. Walking tall this weekend. We're going to be out there. We're going to be doing some live streaming. We'll be showing off, uh, Showing off these vans. These vans here. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. If you're walking tall, come, yeah, come say hi say to us. Say hi, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, but yeah, trails are a, a great way. It keeps the mind engaged. There's a lot more variety to it. So I, I personally do not like going and running on the road. Um, I don't mind going and doing trails. Trails are actually softer as well, typically. So a usually. little less uh, little less impact. Softer, yes. Lower impact, not always the case. <laughs> Especially when you trip and fall. Yeah, exactly. Or roll an ankle or something exactly. like that. So yeah. uh, if you look at a lot of like the like elite level runners and triathletes, they run on like gravel paths and like groomed like gravel and dirt. Very consistent surface. Yes, yep. extremely consistent surface. Mm -hmm. So mixing in trail, while it is good, mm -hmm. um, it can be more high impact especially if you're running like downhill a lot. Oh yeah. Well, the you, you do you do generally get a lot more undulation on a uh, on a trail sure. than you do out on a road. So, yeah, definitely steeper be, inclines be careful and there. declines. Yeah. Um so like a lot of what we, you know, what we see and this is like what gets most cyclists in trouble. This is the reason for this this podcast. Absolutely. So this next point is the reason for the podcast. So you've, I mean, if you've even been riding for a, a year or a couple of years and you've done, you know, a decent amount of training, you've probably developed a pretty solid aerobic engine. Mm -hmm. The lungs and the heart. Yeah. Strong. Uh, so, you know, while that's great, you, you know, you feel, even if you go out and run, you can even feel for the first part of it, feel great mm -hmm. running. I mean... If you haven't ran in years, you can go out and for most people, like if you're a, a fairly high level cyclist, you can go out and run a pretty good clip. 
yes, I've gone and done that before. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm breathing easy here. I'm rolling yeah. pretty good pace. This is my first run in this three years. This is my first run in three years. And this is a cautionary tale. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you have this big aerobic engine. And so it, that's that part of it doesn't phase you. Mm -hmm. But what's happening is your, your musculoskeletal system is not prepared whatsoever for the impact of running not at all and so cyclists go out and they get and they just start chalking chalking up miles and most of the time fast miles but it's like well if i'm only gonna run 30 minutes i might as well leg it out yeah if you're doing five miles in, on your first run back uh or maybe your first yeah. run in years you're doing three miles that's that's going to be way too much too soon yeah too much too soon man that's that's the but honestly pretty much every cyclist is going to be guilty of doing this so yeah. you know follow these tips Listen we're up. about ready to to run through um, because what we want to make sure you avoid is going out knocking out that first run and usually that first run's going great until suddenly it's like until it's not a switch and you're like whoa yeah. like my hip flexors are starting to feel destroyed right yeah. now my cat or my my calves calves achilles quads, quads like usually it's kind of a split thing and then you start noticing, oh, my knee, like knee pains can pop up yeah. and it, it can be literally within a matter of steps that you start noticing this. Um, and what, and the worst thing is you, you end up with some stupid overuse thing or like smaller mm -hmm. injury that is going to sideline you like, mm -hmm. or not, or you'll just keep running or riding and then you'll hurt yourself it, for good yeah. Yeah. Uh, or like for a long downtime. But even like if you even if you cause yourself to have to take off if you're like in the off season or whatever while you're not actually doing a big training load well now you are losing fitness mm -hmm. uh, because you're having to to lay off uh volume and intensity in both sports to let it subside mm -hmm. so the big moral of the story is here or, or moral of the story here is we're trying to prevent too much too soon exactly that's that's 100% the the main thing. Initially you don't need to think of your runs as a workout. No. So if you're going into it thinking, okay, I only got 30 minutes, I need to knock out a big workout and get the most out of this I can, that is not the mindset we want you in. Not at first. Um so key number 1, keep it easy and easy. run slash walks, doing a run walk structured interval combo is okay. Yeah. And in fact, probably advised yeah. for most people um, because, and, and the mindset of most cyclists, you're coming off, say a race season, or you've been doing this, you know, heavy training, a lot of intervals is you want to push hard. You want to feel that, you know, aerobic and yeah. muscular strain. This is not the time to do it. Like you need to allow the body time to adapt, get rid of the ego if yeah, you no. get passed by, you know, a person who you think uh, you're definitely a lot more fit than, don't worry about it. Um, you can have to put the pride aside for a minute. Exactly. Because your goal is to let the body adapt uh, before you start increasing strain. So yep. run, run walks are cool. If you're not someone who's going to do, well, even if you are doing a run walk, it kind of segues into, into point number two here, which is keep it short. Yeah. And go ahead and talk to us a yeah, little bit. Short like short is relative. Yeah, exactly. To everyone. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're talking like 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Like if you're gonna run straight on, 10 to 15 minutes. If you're gonna if you can if you can like put the ego aside and do some walk running and stuff like that, you're probably good to do 20, maybe 30 minutes mm -hmm. if you really kind of kind of walk running. And we'll have athletes do like two minute run, one minute walk. We have some people do one minute run, two minute walk. Yeah. Um, so limit the duration of your, the run interval initially. I wouldn't go, you know, if you haven't run in a long, long time um, and you're wanting to get, you know, 20, 30 minutes in, I would stick with a, you know, two minute run interval at most yeah. initially, especially on those first, you know, two weeks. I think the people that are most guilty of it are, are, people who have done either tri like went from running to cycling or triathlon to cycling only and then came back and it's like it's like sometimes like for myself if i go in the weight room i'm like well i used to lift a ton i'll mm -hmm. just throw some weight on there and yeah. 
Uh, I know I used to be able to hit these paces. Yeah, I used to be able to run this fast, this mm-hmm. far, and they try to go right back to it or even mm-hmm. close to it, and that's where they get themselves in, in major trouble. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, keep it short. Keep it easy. What you can do is, um, like, build the frequency first. So, like, mm-hmm. um, you run once, you know, once, once in the first week for 15 minutes the second week you run twice for 15 minutes and we don't start upping the duration until we've gotten to the max frequency that we're looking for yep and for a lot of cyclists that's like two times a week maybe three so you may be uh riding uh three to four days and then running two to three days Mm -hmm. um it depends on the person but you want to get to that max frequency you're looking for before you even do anything with volume, mm-hmm. um, because the the more frequent stimulus is gonna you're gonna adapt better to it yep. than just start piling on one day loads. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, it's it's a better scenario. So with that, and this is we kind of jumped around the tips here, but the the next tip is if we are gonna increase frequency, do not stack days. Don't nope. stack runs back to back exactly. initially. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a bad idea because and by stacking, in case there's confusion there, it means doing them one day and then another run the following day. The following day, day yeah. Um, when your body goes under a load uh, and it starts to kind of go into the recovery process, there's acute fatigue and accumulated fatigue. Mm-hmm. And acute fatigue for a lot of people is fine. Um, so if like you did a run in the morning and then you did a short run in the evening, that's usually okay. But when you stack two days and you have that accumulation of fatigue over two day period, that's usually where things like your body is trying to repair stuff. So your body doesn't handle that, that like accumulated fatigue quite as good. So don't stack. No don't, stacking. Don't stack in days. Get like, get to that maybe four week period before you consider stacking another you know stacking run days together Mm -hmm. and typically what we like to do which kind of goes into our next tip here is uh, you know what day do you add it to and usually what we have our athletes do is add it to the days that you're you're already doing your strength training (laughs) right so a lot of our athletes we have doing strength two to three times a week typically two is kind of the go-to for a cyclist and even you know triathletes trying to squeeze out too much more than that um you know we have a hard time you know, two's two's tough enough kind of for thing to, to get it's it in. Tough. Two two's about a lot like for some if we're focusing on that specifically, yeah, we're gonna do three mm-hmm. for sure. So add it to add it to your day that you're already doing strength. strength. Yeah. Um, so you so had a, muscles are already going under some some load and and some strain. Yeah. But key here is we're still in that uh, acute fatigue factor. We're not you mm-hmm. know we're not gonna do strength one day and then run the next day because mm-hmm. then you've now accumulated, it's, it's in more of that accumulated fatigue mm-hmm. uh, and the body breakdown's already happened. Yeah. Um, but if you have that day where you used to ride for an hour or whatever, hour 15, 30, now you can you know, reasonably put in a 30 minute run and a 30 minute strength session mm-hmm. and you're getting so much more bang for the buck than that one hour garbage ride uh, that mm-hmm. wouldn't have netted you anything. Yep. Um, so, I mean, that's... And with that, the question we, we, we <laughs> actually, I just got it last week was, okay, so if I'm going to run on the same day I'm doing strength, what order should I do it in? And we highly recommend don't, don't treat your run as a warm-up. Instead, no. knock out your strength work first and then add in what is going to be an easy run-walk or very short, low-intensity yeah. run afterwards. Yeah, I've, I've personally, uh, this is, uh, I've had this happen and I used to live close to a YMCA and so I would run to the Y and lift and then run home. And a couple of times, even though I've been running consistently for years and, uh, you know, and training quite a bit, I would run two miles to the gym and then go under a squat rack and feel like my quads were going to just tear Mm -hmm. while I was doing a squat. Um, So not like it's not that it's going to happen. I was not lifting super light, but I wasn't lifting super heavy either. But 
you, you want to like get the strength training in first, do your warm up even, do the strength training, and then you can do your running afterwards and you, you're at a m- much less risk of, um, you know, any type of an injury type of thing. Within the, yeah, especially if you're going under heavier, under heavier load. load uh, yeah. yeah, strength training. Now, if you're I going super have... light with both, less of an issue, uh, the order you put those. Yeah. Um, but yeah, typically if you're going to be, if you're going to be going higher load on your strength training, yeah. save and your, your easy adaptation run, uh, <laughs> adaption run. I think <laughs> for after. <is> a noun. <laughs> <laughs> um, and ultimately that's your goal. So if we think about the guide to running, our, our goal with this is to like get you, get you to a point where you're able to handle or increase duration and intensity without setting yourself back, getting you injured having you so sore that you don't want or can't do any other quality work the rest of the week, yeah. um, or you don't want to or can't get another run in for a week or more. Um, it's really easy for, for a cyclist, um, especially with like connective tissue that doesn't, that doesn't repair itself and adapt as quick as like a muscle would. Right. Um, you need to gradually stress that and give it time to recover rather than going out and trying to Two pain trains. Double pain uh, train. This is a special episode. Nice. This is a special episode. (laughs) Uh, But you got to give it time to adapt. So what tends to happen with most cyclists, they they do too much. They do it too soon. Um, Usually all it takes is one day of over overdoing it, going too long, too hard, or typically a combo of both because the the aerobic system's strong enough to handle the higher pace. Um, And you can you can like get yourself injured to a point where you can't do anything for I've had weeks. people who, who um, coaching that travel and they're cyclists, competitive cyclists, and they travel and normally when they are traveling, because we hadn't been running, I would either give them like an elliptical, like let them do an elliptical and lift. And lo and behold, they decided to run instead of doing an elliptical uh and screwed themselves up for mm-hmm. a couple of weeks mm-hmm. you know and that's leading into a a race yep. it's during the season you know off season you can make a few more mistakes you know in that regard but um you know you can't just throw it in and expect it no. to to go well no no and that's where a lot of knee, knee injuries can happen is exactly what it was. IT band mean, stuff, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, plantar fasciitis, Achilles issues, yeah. calf issues. Small muscles and connective tissue yeah. are, you know, prime time for too much too soon. Yeah. I mean. So it kind of segues into uh, what will pretty much be our final point here, which is listen to the body yeah. and and be patient with the whole process don't think about running in the first month as something which i've mentioned already is something that's going to be building your fitness give your body that first you know three to four weeks and your goal should essentially be how minimal uh, uh soreness can you have the next day and the day after yeah. uh, i guarantee you you go out and run for 15 straight minutes if you have not been doing any running and you are going to have a whole lot of calf soreness. Your quads are going to be uh, feeling uh, extremely sore. Hip flexors, um, all of that is is going to be sore. Even if you try to go easy, yeah. you're still going to feel some soreness. So keep it super light on the front end. Don't go into it with the mindset of you know this is this is my quality workout for the week. Uh, be patient and give your body time to to adapt. Perfect. If you do this, if you follow all these tips, this is something that your body will adapt to. You'll be able to handle yeah. 30, 40, 45 minute runs uh, you know, at an aerobic pace, even a tempo pace, um, and not have it detract from any other workout, not have it. In fact, it would help supplement your other workouts, keep you, you a healthy, like functional you human being. You may find you like it. I don't you know. You may find <laughs> well, you, may find you like it. <laughs> then you can start jumping into uh, triathlons. Then you can just do some do and then maybe learn how to swim i don't know there you go uh but yeah just be patient with it it is a great you know off-season thing it's a i think everyone to be as a functional human being Mm -hmm. we were made to run initially oh not necessarily to ride bicycles (laughs) 
uh, bicycles weren't created yet, but to be a functional human, you know, running is a is a thing that you yeah. should be able to do without you know feeling so sore. Which kind of reminds me of the T.J. Van Garter and coat. Did you hear? Yeah. This one, I, I I can't remember if I mentioned it or not. I think it was Michael Woods that was talking to T.J. Van Garter and um, and Michael Woods used to be a like yeah. high level uh, runner. Yeah. Probably. And they were both at the Tour de France, and he's like, "Can you believe like the whole course of the Tour de France?" we're like probably not going to even walk like three miles because like on the bike, they yeah. minimize anything yeah. besides bike warm up, the race, the cool down, yeah. everything else that's like feet up, massage, like yeah. minimal load on the body, as little as you can do. And uh, TJ was quoted as saying, or, or he's like, like, sorry, let me go back. He's like, we're probably only going to do like two or three miles of walking like this entire month you know, one, one month of the year, two miles of walking. Um, he's like, that's just not good as a, as a human being, like to do that little. And TJ Van Garderen goes, I'm not trying to win at being the best or the most functional human being. <laughs> I'm trying to win a bike race. <laughs> like, I like that. <laughs> not trying to win. That's at being a, a specialization. Being for a you. human being. <laughs> uh, it was funny. I probably butchered that, but <laughs> it was pretty funny initially. All right, I think that's it. That, I think we covered it. Uh, so just kind of, if you follow these tips, you mm-hmm. you you should be fine. Just you got to just avoid too much too soon. And what I would love to hear, we should have done this at the beginning. If you're listening live uh, or hear this afterwards, give us a, a thumbs up. <laughs> if you are someone who's a cyclist or someone who's first started running and have totally demolished yourself on your first run to a point where the soreness was so bad, you were walking like a like a stick leg trouble trouble, <laughs> trouble with the toilet sit down uh-huh i would i would be amused to hear <laughs> tell us some stories yep all right we appreciate you guys hanging out listening watching we will catch you guys next time peace adios